This week on Maker Monday, join us as we recognize Scott Whirling, a local steampunk artist who finds beauty in what others have discarded. What started as an interest in restoring cars and lawnmowers has transformed into a hobby of creating one-of-a-kind lamps and sculptures from scrap metal that he finds at junkyards, auctions, or really whatever he can get his hands on. Hi, I'm Scott Whirling, and I'm a junk artist and a maker in our community. Scott is fortunate to have a large studio space and an abundance of tools that help his visions come to life. Wherever you look, there are scraps that an untrained eye may overlook and disregard. But to Scott, they could be a light, a sculpture, or anything his imagination can lead him to creating. Even his studio bathroom is brimming with his creations or pieces that he has found interesting. Okay, they, these lamps here, um, like this is a finished one. I've made a couple that are like this. It's a bunch of different parts and pieces I welded in there. And uh, this one's got the valve that turns. It's not plugged in. Like this one here, same way. This will turn the light off and on. But I start out with a base. And when I go to the junkyard or auctions, I'm looking at the base. I gotta start out here. This is a, an implement uh, off of a planter. I'm not sure farmers would know what that is. But um, I start out with that and it ends up to be like, like this here. And they're, they're kind of heavy. Um, I gotta figure out a way to get my pipe. You know, this is too big or this is not quite right. You know, but I put a, an adapter or reducer in here. I welded it on there and started up. But I gotta get to this pipe and I come up and see like this here. You know, I start off of there and I'm not really sure where I'm going. I just start grabbing pipe and start putting it on and I started coming up with this idea right down here. I can't get to it. But, um, coming down here with my uh, electrical where I used to just cut a hole or drill a hole down at the bottom. But I started doing it this way. I kind of like that. A little extra pipe, but uh, it looks neater. Meat grinders, uh, same way. It starts out kind of like this here. Looks like that. You've seen them in the malls or maybe used one. And then uh, I'm gonna make it look like make it look like this. That one's pretty simple to make. Where the it used to screw down to a countertop, and then I put that in. So those are those are pretty simple. The one over here. This was the first one I made. It wasn't, looks simple, but it wasn't trying to get these wires and connectors inside this little bitty pipe and the switches up here. And uh, I found this at a antique store or flea market, I don't know where. I got this in the junkyard and drilled a hole in it, made a shade. Um, I really like that one. I think that's a popular color and the cranberry I think is gonna be a good color. With my valves, this was an old valve I got at a, um, down at Portland, I think at the, uh, the spring swap, I got that. And it was nasty looking, but cleaning it up made it look like that. Just like this one here, this is a brand new one. This is an old one, but my switch goes in there. And uh, that's what, that's what uh, turns it off and on like that. So, uh, or I can put another switch with a light switch with a, a socket, that works. Um, if you wanted something to plug in, put your phone there. Um, I can go either way. A lot of people like, like, like that part of it. All kinds of different ways. An interesting and unique feature of some of Scott's lamp designs is that he uses scrap valves as a mean of powering them on and off which adds to the steampunk flair his art already naturally possesses. Taking materials that we would not conventionally associate with art and making it beautiful and unique is what Scott does best. He told us that typically 
he starts his art by finding a good base piece of metal. But sometimes, if he is stuck and not sure what to do with the piece, he simply wanders the junkyard with his wife, Lisa. They will walk around finding pieces that jump out at them as transformable or that would fit a specific idea perfectly. Once the pieces are finished entirely, he will clear coat them most often, but has been known occasionally to add paint for pops of color. Yeah. I still see some in the community, you know, that, you know, people will see, you know, and yeah. say, oh, your husband does that? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so that is nice to see some of that stuff out there. You know, our date night consists of going to the junkyard and looking for rusty crap and putting it together. Then he's the brains that uh, can put it all together and, and and sometimes we'll come up with ideas, you know, he'll go, what do you think about this? Yeah, finding stuff that people just throw away and mm -hmm. I just, really? <laughs> yeah. so I, I see yeah. more value in it than being melted down and make Toyotas or something out of them. You know. So that is fun. If you would like to commission Scott for a one-of-a-kind piece, contact him via phone call or text at the number above. However, if you would like to see firsthand and purchase some of Scott's pre-made pieces, make sure to check out what he has displayed for purchase at Yvonne Marie's Antique Mall in Decatur, Indiana.